Everyone in Canada knows Love Law Companies Limited. You might have seen or shopped from one of its grocery chains, No Frills, Love Loss, or TNT. Or you might have bought your clothes from its clothing brand, Joe Fresh. Or even you might have bought your medicine from its pharmacy chain, Shoppers Drug Mart. Love Law Companies Limited is one of the biggest and most successful companies in Canada. So my team and I decided to take you to a journey to learn more about Love Law Companies Limited. Some of the topics that we want to cover are the company's corporate and social responsibility and ethical behavior, their contingency plan and risk management, their response to cultural differences and diversity, their relationship with the government of Canada, and much more. So without further ado, let's get into it. Loblaw's 40-year-old private label discount brand No Name that is known for its yellow and black packaging with no hype, tell it like it is language, launched its largest campaign that was a combination of social media campaign, out of home, transit campaign, and TV commercial that went viral in 2019. No Name created their campaign just like their products packaging that contain their actual name of the products. For example, they called biscuits, biscuits, a beer, a beer, peas, yeah, you're right, peas. In their campaign, they did the same thing. They called a building, a building, a billboard, a billboard, a hallway, you guessed it right again, a hallway. And the list goes on and on. They took over the busiest subway in Canada and called everything, everything. They created a viral cat video that went viral. In addition, they live tweeted Emmys on Twitter during the 2019 Emmys. All of these actions got everyone's attention, which resulted in tremendous growth in the brand value. Their multi-faced campaign resulted in a 13% increase in quality perception an 11% boost as a brand that consumers are proud of, and $3.5 million in sales growth. Now we're going to talk more about corporate social responsibility of the company and how it controls the risk. In terms of CSR, Lovelace has three main pillars, environment, sourcing, and community, with an aim to provide a meaningful impact on the issues that matters the most. Lovelace is making a carbon reduction strategy to reduce the environmental effects and their goal is to reduce footprint by 30% by the end of 2030. On top of it, Loblaws are continuously investing a lot in the charity to improve the health and wellness of Canadians. Product program like Personal Choice Children Charity, they are improving food, education and accessibility for hundreds of thousands of Canadian children. Moving forward, the company has very strong contingency planning program to con Control the risk associated with enterprise operation and finance to ensure its sustainability. All the risks linked with enterprises are identified and managed by the ERM program, and it allows them to manage their risk with appropriate level of tolerance by bringing a systematic approach to measure and monitoring key risks and then prioritizing the risk accordingly. To improve its operation, the company continuously making strategies in the key area including employee training, implementing many security measures, monitoring and testing a protective system, and so on. To cover with the financial risk, the company is using over-the-counter derivative instrument to offset certain of these risks. Now, let me connect you to my another team member to talk about some facts in detail. Hello, my name is Bojana Fertiom, and I'm going to tell you about how the Canadian government involved in Loblos business. Loblaws is a private health company that was founded by Fiora Loblo and Milton Cork in 1919 and is now owned by Galen Weston, a Canadian businessman and member of the famous Weston family. Although Loblaws is the largest food distributor in Canada, the company remains privately owned and does not become government property. But despite this, the government takes part in the existence of the Loblaws and often supports them. For example, in 2019, the Canadian government funded Loblaws with $12 million dollars which Loblaws are not required to return. Many citizens, public figures and politicians, including the New Democracy Party leader Jamit Singh, have denounced the government, Loblaws and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau for corruption and irrational waste of funds that could go to finance small and medium-sized businesses. 
Now I will tell you about Loblaw's plans for expanding their business and their geographical politics. Loblaws, throughout their history, only developed within Canada and showed no interest in expanding to the other countries. Loblaws and all Loblaw Companies Limited subsidiaries, including President's Choice, No Name, Job Fresh, Teddy's Choice and many more, exist and operate exclusively within Canada. But there is one exception, where a Yoff Cloven subsidiary, Job Fresh, has opened permanent and pop-up stores in New York City and the surrounding region. But this case is an exception to the rule and not the general practice of Loblaw Companies Limited. Loblaws currently has more than 2,000 stores in Canada, which are valued at more than 50 billion Canadian dollars, and these numbers are increasing every year. I believe they adhere to this policy in order to maintain a good brand reputation and quality control. It will be much more difficult to control quality in the other countries, and this can lead to unpleasant situations in connection with which the brand can lose its reputation and cease to be perceived as high quality and premium. Therefore, they are located exclusively in Canada in order to better control the quality of goods and services. Hi everyone, greetings from the hot, humid, but beautiful Indonesia. My name is Audrey and I'm going to talk about some of Loblaw's foreign exchange efforts that they did. And yeah, so let's jump right to it. As part of efforts to expand their business model and to broaden their spectrum, both on getting the supply and supplying their subordinates, Loblaw's established cooperation with various companies and countries across the globe. Here are some of Loblaw's foreign exchange efforts. Import and exporting. To provide their customer with the best quality products, Loblaw's has done some foreign exchange with countries all over the world. Not only them getting their grocery produce imported directly from the country it's originally from. For example, for decades Loblaw's have been imported fresh produce like pok choy, long eggplant, madly leaf, napa cabbage, and okra from Mexico, Dominican Republic, and Central American country. Loplas company also took part on Canadian exporting scheme by bringing its subordinate company Joe Fresh discount clothing line to overseas in a major expansion to the US, East Asia, Middle East, and North Africa country. However, one of the most important factors to the success of export and import transaction is custom duty and tariff. In 2018, with the cause of the China-US trade war, Loblaws was affected by the situation as their product prices rose in the third quarter as the retaliatory tariff on the U.S. imports came into effect. The price increase was measured by the adds to higher transportation costs and wages, as Canada currency got weaker compared to the U.S. too. From this, it can be concluded that company import and export effort depend a lot on each other country's regulation and also situation of the global market. The other thing that Loblaws company do to expand their business is with wholly owned subsidiaries. To expand their business into the Canadian Asian household, Loblaw company acquired Tenti Supermarket. On July 24, 2009, they announced that its subsidiary Loblaws Inc. did complete the acquisition process of Tenti Supermarket, a Canadian supermarket chain that sells primarily Asian food. The main goal for this acquisition is for them to expand their target market to the Asian household by providing them with their favorite and familiar foods while also introducing a variety of Asian groceries to Canadian society. This action brought a huge success to Loblaw's company. According to George Winston Limited 2010 annual report, Loblaw's sales for 2010 were up by 0.9% from $30.7 billion for 2009 to $31 billion in 2010. The sales were positively impacted by 1.4% because of the acquisition of the anti supermarket. On top of that, as Canadian groceries and retail market have become more and more competitive with the presence of the retail juggernaut that were most populated by the U.S. big chain, such as Target Carp and Walmart Stores Inc., Lopla needed to step up their game to survive Canadian retail market. Therefore, in 2013, Lopla's company made a definite agreement to acquire Shoppers Drug Mart for $12.4 billion in cash and stock. This deal is considered the biggest acquisition of the two Canada biggest retails with Loblaws being Canada's number one food retailer and shoppers being number one in the pharmacies and beauty category. This acquisition strengthened both retailers' position to hold the largest market share in the Canada retail market. The news of the agreement soars up shoppers' share immediately for about 27% and Loblaws share by 9% the next day after the announcement was made. The newest and the latest acquisition effort that made by Loblaws company was in the last quarter of 2020 by acquiring technology and the related team from iTurn Marketing Inc., a subsidiary of Torstar company. 
The transaction was made to strengthen Lapla Media and Digital Marketing Agency that were launched back in 2019. With the new technology and expertise, Lapla wishes to strengthen their media and marketing for them, for them to be able to reach their customer with ads and promotion without the reliance on third-party media companies. The last business model that I'll mention is joint venture. Joint venture is a business model created by two or more parties that is generally characterized by shared ownership, liability, and shared governance duty. To improve their customer experience quality with some of their business, Lapla's company have done several joint venture with other international corporations being two of them are partnering up with a startup company called Leak and TerraCycle. In November 2020, Loplus has partnered up with a Toronto-based startup company that works in the health tech category, named Leak, to develop and launch a new health-focused app that intend to provide Canadians with access to health and care resources. Leak was founded in 2014 and offers a data-different platform that is designed to provide customers to be more engaged with their health, lifestyle habit, and benefit program. Loplus' partnership with Leak came around 2018 and follow up with the investment in Leak in September 2019. Their new joint venture is called PC Health App, where the app provides users free access to nurses and dietitians who can provide advice and support to their health. And as per, no as per November 2020, the app is already launched in Ontario, British Columbia, and Alberta. The recent partnership that Loplus' company did is with the TerraCycle a waste management company that was founded by Torontonians but based in Trenton, New Jersey. Laplas partnered up with their subordinate company called Loop to allow customers to shop for products in durable packaging that has been reused and recycled. The purpose of this collaboration is to reduce the amount of waste and plastic used in the product packaging. Partnering up with Loop is one of the ways that Laplas did to undertake waste reduction. This initiative is planned to begin mostly for Ontario residents so customers can shop for food and household products in refillable packaging such as grocery produce, ice cream, sauces, snacks, pet food, etc. So yeah, that's it for the discussion about Loplas. If you follow along with the video, you will know that we introduced the company, the company culture, and also their contingency plan, and also their geographic. So make sure to watch every single thing of that. But in conclusion, Loplas is a big retail company here in Canada that is great and they still care about their customer and employee and also the environment. They try their best to train their employee and also obtain their sources ethically so they can provide the best quality service and product for their customer. And we also explain about their foreign exchange effort, how they work with other company and how they work with other country in terms of providing the best quality and providing the best sources uh, produce or uh, food that is available for Canadians. So that's it for us. If you have any more questions, please comment, feel free to comment down below and uh, feel free to ask about the Laplace or about the term that we use in this uh, video. And also thank you so much Professor Tim for teaching this courses. It's been great. So I'll talk to you guys maybe soon or maybe in the future. Bye bye.